The Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. This is Gerard with episode number 43 of Florida's Fresh Mix on the Florida Podcast Network, a random mix of Florida's freshest personalities. Welcome back to Florida's Fresh Mix podcast. My name is Amber Amwardegi, and I am the lead content producer of the Florida Podcast Network. With me today, as always, who else would it be but your host, Gerard. Gerard, say hello to the Fresh Mixers. You know what's up. It's me, Gerard, in the building. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, we have a pretty cool episode for you all today. We have another friend of Gerard's. Gerard, you were not lying when you said you had a lot of friends. Like this has to be the fourth or fifth on the show. And I'm not complaining about it. They've been amazing guests, amazing conversations. And this one is definitely one of those. Well, I can't complain. I I've, I tell people all the time, I've been very blessed to uh, have accumulated a deep reservoir of uh, amazing, loyal uh, hilarious and super interesting friends throughout my life. And uh, for that, I'm, I'm very thankful. And one of those super interesting friends is Edwin Muhammad, today's guest. He is the founder of Brainwash Media, which is an innovation agency that develops unique projects which provide creative solutions to social problems. He works with a lot of brands. They do a lot of marketing for those types of things. But I'll let Edwin explain it. He explained it so much more elegantly than I just did. But yeah, another great, solid conversation. And there's something that you said in this in this chat, Gerard, where after Edwin had finished explaining the way that his company provides marketing services to these brands, you said something like, I had never heard of marketing explained this way. So it's a... It's a different take on marketing, but very effective and obviously very fascinating because he's on their show today. Yes, I would I would consider it uh, to be actually a, an elevation of marketing and you, you, you will see why. For sure. Some quick announcements before we dive into Edwin's interview. PodFest 2023 is happening. Not next spring, but actually in January. So it's right around the corner, January 26th through the 29th. It's going to be at... Very accelerated schedule. Amber. I know. I mean, that, that's great. It's exciting. No, for sure. I was expecting it to come around in May again, but no, we got it in January 2023. On the 26th through the 29th, it's going to be at Renaissance Orlando at SeaWorld. So get your tickets. We have a link in the show notes. If you're a podcaster, if you're a newbie podcaster, or if you're someone who's thinking about starting a podcast, this is the expo for you to be at. And plus, as far as I know, I'm going to be there. Gerard, are you planning on being at PodFest 2023? Look, I've got no skin in the game whatsoever other than for selfish motives that I just enjoyed it so much, and I was definitely a newbie to the game. I think that I, I, my anniversary of being a podcaster for one year happened during PodFest. Yeah, it did. So uh, uh, that was my first time attending, and I've made a pledge to myself to attend every year since then, even if it's just j- just the good vibes among all the yes. podcasters and all the ideas and support you get. It's like uh, you know, you know, you know that phrase "crabs in a barrel." It's it's the opposite of that. It's like everybody helping uh, uplift each other, and uh, you make great contacts. And like I'm, I'm just I, I can't say I can't say enough about it. It's great. No, for sure. And come meet us. We're both going to be there. And also, that's where we found a ton of guests. We still have one guest lined up. I'm not going to say who it is, but it was someone that Gerard met at Podfest. So who knows? Correct. We might run into you. Yes. You can go. You're going to want to tune in for this one. Yes. <laughs> yes. We have been trying to get her on. Okay. We won't get into it. No spoilers. I'm just gonna switch subjects. Yes. <laughs> yes we, we, we get into the, uh, 
in, in this interview, we get into the bear essentials. But anyway. The ahead. bear essentials. I like that. <laughs> They're like, is it going to be a bear? <laughs> <laughs> we have the Florida bear. No spoilers. Let's no go. No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> All right. One more announcement before we get things going. Gerard, tell the people about guitars over guns. Go. Well, as our devoted Fresh Mixers already know, for the past three years, I've proudly served on the board of directors of Guitars Over Guns, uh, also known as GoGo. And GoGo is an incredibly impactful nonprofit organization that offers students from disadvantaged communities in Miami, Chicago, and Los Angeles a powerful combination of music education and strong mentoring relationships with professional musicians to help them overcome hardship, find their voice, and reach their potential as tomorrow's leaders. Please head to the show notes for more information and most importantly, to donate, 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 especially because as we record this, it is Give Miami Day. And so this is when Miami comes together to give to amazing charities, uh, nonprofits, and, and amazing causes. And I can't think of a more amazing cause than GoGo. It's for the kids. All for the kids. Let's make it Give Florida Day for all the people out there listening who are not in Miami. Give Florida Day. I just made it up. It's today. And you have to go give to GoGo right now in the show. I like that too. I don't care if you're listening to this in uh, in Florida or Uzbekistan. I don't even know if that's a country. But <laughs> you know, just donate to GoGo. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Let's get into Gerard's conversation with his friend, Edwin Muhammad, the founder of Brainwash Media. Today is another great day that I get to interview someone I actually know and love like a brother. This is Edwin Muhammad, entrepreneur, fashionisto. I don't even know that's a word, but that's what I would call you. And just an all around amazing dude with a great soul, great creativity, and the founder of Brainwash Media. And I can't wait to hear more about my boy. So what's up, Edwin? What's good? How you doing, brother? How you doing? It's been a while. We haven't been disconnected for quite some time, and good uh, that we caught back up, and we're here now. And I'm, you know, it's a pleasure for me to actually be here with you, and I appreciate you having me on. That's exactly right, and I feel like the fates brought us here today because uh, I think the last time we saw each other, we ran into each other randomly at the. Uh, oh no, actually. Let, let me, that's not the last time. The second to last time I think we saw each other was at the Emerge America's uh, Tech Conference in Miami. And I went for two days and I ran into you both days. Like one day I was by myself and the other day I was with my girl to go see Serena Williams. And then uh, we ran into each other both days and we hadn't seen each other in, I think since pre-COVID. Yeah. And I was like, Man, this is just this is just fate. We gotta, I gotta get you on my podcast. We gotta catch up and and do all the things. So, but I think the last time I saw you was also fate because I just saw you randomly walking down the street. I was like, man, right. when are we gonna do this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm so happy you're here, brother, and thank you so much for uh, for making the time. I know you're a busy bro. So, listen, I would like you to tell my audience how we met from your perspective. Oh. How do we know? How do we know each other? I, you yeah. might not remember how we met, though, <laughs> but but how we know each other. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I think I remember how we met and it was through a mutual friend and it was on the scene in South Beach at one of these social events. And then we kind of connected from there and we followed up from that point and kind of built the relationship, kept going from that. That's right. That's right. All right. Listen, man. So, so I want to dive right into brainwash yeah. media. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell people how you describe yourself uh, on your site. So you say that Brainwash Media is an innovative agency committed to empowering people through social impact. We deliver unique projects that provide creative solutions to social problems. Each project offers exciting campaigns that empower people. I found that, there, and, and I don't usually read things off of websites verbatim, but I just found that very interesting and intriguing and you know well-written, which uh, I always enjoy. 
But there's a through line throughout your website, which is social impact, social impact, social impact. So tell me, you know, if I'm a client of Brainwash Media, why am I coming to you? And what does social impact mean to you? And how are you going to explain it to me as a client? That's a good question. All right. Now, number one, every brand and that brand can be an individual that can be a product organization or service needs three things. You need awareness, you need engagement, and you need sales from a bottom line perspective. Awareness, if you're just trying to get out there, you just want to get more visibility and you want people to know who you are. Engagement, you need to now connect better with others in order to uh, foster good relationships so you can build trust. And after you build trust, then you can establish a working relationship with people and turning them into actual customers and advocates. And then that's how your sales come in. And so everyone needs that. And you're at some stage and some companies are focusing on one of those stages. Some are focusing on all of them in a progression or whatever it may be. It's a little different for every person. So what better way to begin to increase any of that than to build and foster a more meaningful relationship with the person that you need to connect with? Now, as a business, you have either two ways on how you're going to be uh, structuring your business and how you're going to engage clients and make money. And that's either what they call B2B or B2C, meaning that you're going to do business to business. And that's how you, that's how you acquire your clients. Or you're going to go business to consumer and you have to reach the mass public and people or segment of the market. And you're going to generate leads and you're going to secure income and revenue from people. But it all boils down to this one thing. You're going to deal with people. You're going to deal with a person, whether you're dealing with business to business, it's another person on the other side that's going to make the decisions that has to make, you know, has to get clear and they're going to clear the budget. They're going to write the check. They have to make the choice on who they're going to work with. If you're going to go to the public, that's obvious because then there's a number of people that's there already that you in a segment of the market that you have to appeal to. So you're dealing with people. That's what it, that's what it boils down to. So now this is where marketing comes in. Now everybody has to market. Marketing basically means how I'm going to present my brand and my service and what I'm providing to people. Mm -hmm. Again, whether it be to B or B to C. So in order to market to that person, you have to now let that person know why you matter in order to get their attention and to see, okay, does your product offer a solution for me? So then there's a lot of, you know, this is this, that's best, best basic marketing 101. Now, here's the next phase of it. And this is why social impact is important. And I'm going to now tie this in and why we do what we do. What better way than to build a relationship with people? Because, in, you know, the better relationship that you can build with people, the more that they're going to be attached to your brand, service, or product. And... What better way to build a better relationship with people than to empower them and help them accomplish what they want in life? This is really marketing on the next level. Mm -hmm. So whoever can do that the best gets the attention of that person. And whoever do that the most effective get to position themselves as a lifestyle brand. And there's a lot of brand loyalty. That person now is really committed to that brand. So social impact marketing and why we do what we do we're taking marketing to the next level, redefining marketing, and we, you know, pretty much disrupting the industry in a sense of traditional marketing. Because traditional marketing is like promoting your product, putting it out there, here, this is what I have, and so forth. Our thing is, no, let's utilize this product and how can your brand help empower your target market and help that individual make their life much easier and help them to accomplish the goal that they are trying to accomplish, what's important to them. So now your brand is actually helping them reach their goals, no matter what that goal may be. So in essence, that's really what a, your brand should do. Whatever that product service that you have, it should be about empowering that person. And, and, and so the perspective is, how can my brand build a better relationship with this person I am trying to get the attention of? And how can I retain that attention in order for them to advocate for my service and brand and what I'm offering? 
Only way for me to do that, honestly, to just truly be real with it. And you have to now look outside of what you want. You have to look at what they want and what they need. And now help them to accomplish what they want and what they need. The more you can do that, the more people feel that you really care about them. Because now you have to really care about them in order to do that. So our perspective is we are truly about empowering people. Because when you empower people, people automatically begin to gravitate towards you. You're building a real meaningful relationship with them. And they're going to automatically support and buy and become an advocate for what you're doing because you're about them. And that's what we're about. So Brainwash Media, we're truly about identifying and figuring out, hey, you know what? Where are the points that matter to people? Where are the pain points that people are feeling? What's the social issues or what's the social problems that are out there? And how can we bring a solution to that to help people through that, to help people navigate and become more empowered in their life to overcome those challenges. And so we create different businesses. We'll launch a business to market and we also create projects that has different campaigns that are designed around a particular problem and a social issue. And it helps to empower that person to become even stronger. And what we found is that there's so much more real engagement that happens there. There's so much more real a connection that's real and meaningful because we're thinking not about our product, we're thinking about the customer's needs. That person, that's a human being that we're dealing with. They're just not numbers. They're just not a follow. They're just not a, a, a someone who can just like something. This is a real person on the other end that we're trying to reach. So we want to make sure that we're seeing it in that way and we want to connect with them in that real way. And we found that doing that brings very real results and very fast. Let me pause you there because you're explaining uh, a marketing concept to me that uh, has never been expressed to me before. And I think I'm getting it. All right. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think I think some of it I intuited uh, ahead of time, but you're you're telling me aspects of it I did not think about or predict. Mm -hmm. So I know from doing my due diligence on uh, Brainwash Media that you guys have worked with some really heavy hitters. I mean, we're talking Microsoft, Adidas, Dasani, Domino's Pizza, Papa John's. I mean, although it's a little it's a little gangster for you to work for both of them. <laughs> wait, 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 whatever. Um, Brightline, you know, and, and by the way, Brightline is a state-of-the-art brand, fairly brand new commuter train that travels up and down the East Coast from Miami to the Palm Beaches. Anyway, I digress. So, um, and also you've you've worked with the Delano Hotel, which is distinctly, not only distinctly Florida, but distinctly historical, quintessential South Beach. So you've worked with all these heavy hitting brands. For With Adidas, for example, I, I what I gather from you is that you're not just like, you know, Adidas is like uh, telling you, hey, you know, we need you to market this new shoe. And you're not just going to be like, hey, the shoe is hot. It's brand new. Go buy it. It's not, it's going to be more than that. Or, or, you know, Domino's pizza, like, you know, we got some new toppings. Buy it. It's delicious. You know, it's, it has more of a personal effect with respect to, like you said, empowering the end client. Just give me an example, real world of what that social impact aspect looks like in the marketing realm. Um, I'll take one project that we did nationally. And mm-hmm. uh, this is a uh, in the health and wellness space, but at the same time, it extends beyond that. So there's a project that we did um, a few years back that we identified a problem and it was dealing with the health within communities and the access to real foods. And, and what I mean by real food is healthy foods and the food insecurity issue down to the access to just getting quality foods where near certain neighborhoods just did not have real grocery stores. And there's like different small, small like shops that are here and there that sells fast food. There's like fast food around, you know, um, in every corner or so forth. And this is predominantly in communities of color. And, and that was an issue that we looked at. And so we came up with a solution that we piloted and it was a project that came up under the banner of the project that's called HEAL, which stands for Healthy, Energetic, Active Lifestyle. We collaborated with a, uh, another group that they brought me in, and it was called ABLE, and we 
for the most part, um, they brought me in and then I ended up at the early stage of it. And then we ended up structuring and creating this whole entire project. And we went through the whole project in this pilot phase called ABLE. What we did was this. Because this was an issue, and this was an issue not in only one particular city, this was like in multiple cities and across different states in this country, we selected a, cur- a certain number of different markets on all the coast, East Coast, all the way to the West Coast and everything in between. We identified and we looked at, okay, how can we provide a means to make better access to quality food at a price where it becomes affordable where even a low income family can still afford it. So now we structured and created a program by creating a partnership with a number of different organizations and groups in different states and cities. And then we ended up working and building a relationship. We fostered relationships, direct relationships with a number of different food sources. So different farms and fisheries and so forth. Where we just we and then we removed the middleman, meaning that we controlled and we structured all the entire distribution of all of that. The reason we did that so that way we can actually have larger margins, so that way we can take those margins and we can share those margins with our partners across the different states and the different cities. Why we wanted to do that, and this is us thinking about how can we empower the people. So in these different states, you have a number of different organizations and in these different cities, you have a number of different organizations that are working with people already. They're, they already have groups of people that they're working with, whether it's an organization, whether it's a religious group or it's another entity. And we tested it out with a couple of them and we said, hey, we have a means and a way to bring some quality food for you guys at a nominal price. And we know that you guys have a model where you typically may fundraise and you may end up um, advocating and getting your group to be a part of different things and do things together. So we was like, hey, we want you to do this. If we come on board and you like what we're doing, we want you to do this. We want you to take on what we have. And we created a program where we had these meals and products that they can order from and they could spend out of what they was already spending, meaning we're not asking them to spend any extra money. They're already doing shopping every week. They're going to the grocery stores and they're spending money. This is the this is these are the groups that we're targeting, the organization that we're working with, well, and the people that supports them. So their supporters are already shopping and spending money at Walmart, Publix, Whole Foods, wherever they go. Our thing was let's have them spend a fraction of what they're already spending with you as the organization. So because they like you anyway, why not have them just spend their money and recycle that dollar back with you? And then it helps you and the whole organization as a whole. And your organization now becomes even more sustainable. And and, and while they're doing that, they're receiving quality goods at a fraction of the cost And they're getting it where now they're getting more healthier foods and they're getting more healthier products and they're supporting that organization that they're already a part of and it's helping them to grow and become more sustainable. So the project- It's a win, win, win. It's a win, win, win situation. So the social impact side of this is we have to look outside of, okay, what is it that we want? We know what we can provide. But let's look at how can we empower others to empower others? How can we get the solution that they're looking for? A lot of these organizations are raising capital, raising money. Um, I won't say like necessarily raising capital because then a lot of them are just raising money and they're getting grants and things of that nature. And, they, they, you know, it's a struggle constantly year by year that they have to constantly keep looking for funds. This model has helped them to gain and generate funds by simply providing products to their groups and their people and their people are supporting the organization without coming out of the pockets with money that they can't afford. They're already spending out of what they're already spending. And it became a cyclical situation, an ecosystem that actually fostered more growth. The end results of that was 
we ended up providing a number of different products. And there's a lot I could talk around this and how it scaled and so much other different opportunities came out of that for different people. But in essence, just for the sake of time, we ended up creating a platform and a system that allowed these organizations to now generate additional revenue to become sustainable while supporting and providing solutions for their members and supporters. And they generated a lot of income while pushing and solving a lot of the issues of getting quality, clean quality foods. And we were serving everything from like top of the line. We worked with one of the top fisheries in the country. We had an organic chicken farm that we uh, pushed a lot of the product to, to a number of other different things. So we had so much quality food that they were able to abstract and get and utilize. It was just absolutely insane. And so this continued on and expanded and we did this across the country in over 30 states and over 112 cities. And the results were outstanding in how people were being able to receive good food. But then at the same time, the revenue share that we did with these organizations out of, uh, we scaled this within a year and a half and into over $3 million annually. And we did approximately about over, if I may remember the numbers correctly, it was about maybe over 250 to to 300,000 was actually given back to a lot of these organizations and helping with that revenue share. Because a certain percentage of whatever we, whatever we acquired, approximately about 25, 30% of what we acquired went back to a share for the partners that we worked with because we wanted to make sure that we kept the overhead low and we gave them the incentive of being able to help the people. And so it became a situation like, okay, we was able to provide this for them. They were able to provide this for their people and the people is going to continuously support them. And that revenue share helped in a lot of ways where it kept lights on to all the way to them opening up different school and educational centers that help youth in those cities. Wait. So in, in other words, uh, it had a uh, significant social impact. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. All right. It, that that that's what we're getting at. <laughs> All right. Well, well, no, I I think I really appreciate you walking me through that because you know I think with concrete examples it it crystallizes more what you're talking about from a marketing perspective. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna give you just a simplistic view from me just as uh, you know I don't have expertise in marketing or anything that you or fashion or anything that you do just from a simple consumer's perspective there's certain societal issues or things that companies do that make me want to boycott their product and there's mm-hmm. certain things that will influence me to use their product if I there's an you know basically an equally viable alternative right so like for instance th- there's a reason a personal reason I have for using Lyft over Uber. Actually, there are several. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't use Uber. Right. But then, but then on the, on the flip side, I I like, you know, there's a t-shirt company. I think they make t-shirts and socks or something. I forgot the name of the company, but they talk about how for every one that they buy or every two that they, that a customer buys, whatever, they donate one to the homeless. Okay. That, that's an incentive for me to want to use that instead of maybe, you know, go to Target and, you know, get, some Hanes underwear or whatever. I don't know. So my, my point, my point is that that's a very simplistic way of looking at it from mm-hmm. a consumer's perspective. Is that somewhat ignorant view uh, by ignorant meaning? I just don't know enough about your, your space. Is that ignorant view in any way aligned, aligned with what it is that you do? Yeah, actually it is. And in the most simplistic way we, yeah, that it boils down to that. Well, put it this way. People support companies and brands that align with their values and morals and vision. And the more a company can share their values, their more, you know, their uh, their objective and so forth. And the clearer that you can show and you can begin demonstrating it, not just talking about it, but demonstrating and showcasing it. And the way you showcase it is through experiences, how people experience the brand. This is how you build that connection. So it really does boil down to that. It boils down to the fact that you support that brand because it aligns with your values and you understand um, you're looking at, hey, you know what? I'd rather put my money towards somebody who's about something that makes sense, but makes sense to you. You know, the next person, it may may not make sense for. It's different for every person, but it boils down to that. So 
companies have to look at, you know, if you want to be successful and you want to really continue to, to um, be competitive as a company brand, whatever, you want to be able to just look at, okay, what is it that my company and my brand is projecting? What are, what's our mission? What's our purpose? What, what are our values? And if you have a company and you have a brand or a service, you need to really look at that as an individual. What is the voice of my company? How is it speaking to people? How is it connected with people? And how is it having a relationship with other people beyond just the money? That's the first things that you need to be looking at so you can foster the right kind of relationship. And so Lyft connects with you. Uber is not connecting with you as much. And there's a reason for that. And Tom's that does this, you know, uh, the shoe company that actually has that purpose where you buy one and then it ends up, you know, they end up getting another pair. Every, every out of every pair you purchase, another pair goes to someone in need. Right. I've seen that too. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then there's a number of other different companies that do that. There's other companies that are doing different projects that are just empowering and helping you to just accomplish what you want to accomplish. And that's the impact. That is the social impact. Social impact is not limited to just like a big charitable movement, but it's all, it's the, it really boils down to the day to day. What's the day to day thing that makes sense for me? Where do I want to spend my money as a consumer? And the more a brand can just be effective in the life, the day to day life of a person in an empowering way, that's the brand that wins. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. I love it. I felt kind of stupid when I was asking the question. I don't feel as stupid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're good to go, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell me, you know, one thing I love about this podcast is that we have so many examples of guests who uh, are entrepreneurs. And I can't let this interview end without at least briefly getting into your origin story. So particularly because you're so unique, you know, as I mentioned before, with the fashion, just your attitude, your entrepreneurial spirit. And let's just face it, you're smarts, man. And and you're and you you're you're clearly a good soul, all wrapped up into one. So first of all, how long have you lived in Florida? Oh, okay. I appreciate that. You're about to make me blush over here. So I'm glad I don't have to see this on the they can't see me right now. They can only hear me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're going to see pictures because I'm going to make sure. Usually, we only ask for one picture. I'm going to make sure Amber, my producer Amber, gets at least three pictures so people can see how cra- crazy your fashion is. And by crazy, I mean like crazy dope. So, but I anyway, appreciate so. that. Yeah, that's my, that's the brand. I mean, we all make a statement. We got to go ahead and uh, utilize the way you look and yeah. present yourself to this world a certain way. Yeah, and your statement is, "Don't you wish you look like me?" That, that, that's the statement. I, and I'm like, and I'm like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. So go ahead. How long? So, how long you? How long have you lived in Florida, bro? You know what? I've actually. I'm from here. I'm actually from Miami. I'm originally from Miami, and I practically lived here my entire life. I lived in other places, but not for long periods of time. I've traveled a lot, but I've decided to stay here because it's such a transient location. It's small. It's and it's concentrated area that's very popularized around the world. So you have everyone coming through here. And so mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons why I stayed and I utilize it in such a way to build relationships and foster relationships. And, it, and that's what takes me all over the country and get a lot of work done. I hear you. I, I agree completely. One thing I love about South Beach is that, you know, and I've, I've lived here for like 21, 22 years. Jeez, time flies. Um, is exactly what you just said. It's concentrated. People come to you from all over the world. You don't have yeah. to go out to them. And you basically don't have to drive damn near anywhere. You can maybe everyone just comes to you. It's not like LA where everything's all spread apart and far apart. So I just love it. It's like a little microcosm of the world in a way. So I, I get it. Uh, I mean, I do complain sometimes that people could be a bit more professional mm-hmm. from a business perspective in, in Miami, but I think that's getting better, as, especially as we develop uh, we develop downtown and uh, and and other places. But anyway, I digress. So I, I know that you initially uh, started Brainwash Media as a design company and that you transitioned about 10 years ago. Give us your entrepreneurial story briefly. Like what inspired you to start the company and then how did it change back in 2011, 2012? Prior to that, about 10 years prior to that, that's where around 2001, 2002, 
I embarked and went from a design company and I had brainwashed then and I won, I went to expand beyond that. And I started a magazine and that's why I ended up going into the fashion entertainment space and then did a lot from that point and then slowed down a little bit to expand around 2011, 2012 with brainwash media. After the impact and what I've learned so much over those years in the fashion entertainment realm between 2000 one to 2011, I've implemented a lot and I've always had an objective and a goal, even going into that. I had a game plan and I was like, all right, I'm going to go and I'm going to do this and I'm going to get this accomplished and I'm going to make a name for myself and position myself and build the right type of relationships. And and I was able to get that there done. In that time, I've learned and that, you know what, how to impact and how to draw people and work with brands and create experiences and so forth. And I've always had a mission and a purpose to help empower people. And that goes back to my youth from how I came up and, um, and seeing so much that has happened and then not having opportunities and then me being able to foster and kind of create a path for myself and seeing my peers not having the same opportunity and losing. Wait, wait, sorry. Where's your, where's your family from? My family's from Haiti. Wait, did I know that? Did I know that we were Haitian brothers? Well, how come I how come I don't remember? That? <laughs> I don't know. You remember that? You, didn't, you don't remember that? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. that's fantastic, man. Have you seen Wakanda Forever? You know what? Not yet. Not yet. Well, you, I need you, to get out there and check it out. You better, as, as especially if you're Haitian, you got to go see it because mm. part of it takes place in Haiti. And no spoilers, but make sure you watch the uh, the end credit scene. All right. Ooh. All right. Anyway, yeah. yeah. All I mean, right. I'll make that a purpose. For you sure. know what? You that 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 one little tidbit made this whole interview worth it, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh-huh. So any, anyway, so so go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So so my I always had a passion about helping youth and helping others. And then I went into um did a lot of community work from like 17 and and ongoing. And so I've always had that acumen about me of just working and helping to do things for others. And that's a whole nother story. But I went into that whole realm. So when I was on the scene, I had a purpose and a mission beyond what was even happening. And I always knew that this was a this was a a, a step onto the next phase of things of me being able to take things on a broader scope. So all of what I was doing, so like even when we met and I'm on the scene with Chris and we were doing so much, working with these brands, doing stuff with Fashion Week and all of this stuff like that, I had that mission and purpose like, okay, this is me establishing something that's going to be able to go a little bit bigger later. So around 2011, what I ended up doing was, okay, I was like, all right, now I've established all these relationships. I've established a brand. I've established my personality, my, my personal brand. And and um, reputation and all of that. Now, how can I take this further? And so I looked at, okay, what else can be done? And I went, I, I went ahead and I looked at, okay, what's the first thing that can be done? I want to actually begin to create some projects that are empowering people in different spaces. And so I decided to transition brainwash media from this design company and it kind of almost like hybrid of like creating certain experiences because that's what produced fashion, which we were doing a lot with throughout, throughout that whole time. Then I concretized like, okay, I'll need brainwash to be this. You need to be this entity that produces more of this because it worked. It worked with the fashion entertainment stuff and the lifestyle stuff. And now let me duplicate this in different industries. So I started off in the education space and I said, let me figure out something with the youth. How can we empower and, and do something with the youth. And I can utilize these relationships that I have with these celebrities and these companies and brands. And they, I know they would easily work with the youth. So we created Envision. Envision is a project that works with youth that help them learn how to turn their skills into a career. And that's just, that, you know, that pretty much is a solution to the educational problem of youth are not being prepared coming out of high school or even out of college for the real world of what's actually happening. And then they happen to not be in all this debt. And then they have to now figure things out while working this debt out. And then that leads to more depression and people uh, being very much um, uncomfortable in life that affects society and the world that we live in. And so Envision, we developed that. And then that became a project that focused on helping to empower youth. And 
that took off and slowly grew more and more. I had like almost no nose. And because I had no nose, I mean that I didn't, everybody loved it. And like the concept, it just forced me to refine it even more, refine it even more, taking it even further. And that was like the kickoff. And so I worked with a lot of companies on that side and brands and we've been expanding more and more, creating a lot of change and impact with youth. Then we moved into the health and wellness space with the Heal Project and the one that I just explained earlier with that. And then there's others that we've done as well. So there's different industries that I want to be able to bring this method into. And that's what the, that's what transition brainwash from that design initial design company to becoming a innovation company because we want to be able to take this model that worked over the years and bring that to people in different industries and different markets to help influence change. Well, that makes perfect sense knowing who you are and, and your heart and uh, the way that your mind works as far as I know, uh, which is forward thinking and empathetic. You're a change agent. And so all of that, all the connections you just made made perfect sense to me. So I'm curious, brother, why why did you end up calling it brainwash media? And the reason I'm asking you this, wait, wait, the reason I'm asking you this is because <laughs> especially now, now I, I'm assuming that you came up with this name many, many years ago before kind of all the, you know, this is not a political podcast, so I'm not gonna mention any names, but before all the talk about, you know, fake news and certain people being brainwashed by the media and, and whatnot. <laughs> like that's like that's like a relatively new thing, right? Yeah. And you you decided to call your company Brainwash Media. I wanna know why. Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two reasons. Number one is polarizing is gonna get your attention. Mm, okay. The main reason is because what we're doing is actually brainwashing people, but in a good sense. Only because we've been indoctrinated, especially in the business realm of how people are marketing and everything like that. It's always been gimmicks. It's always been tricks. It's always been this and that that didn't put people first. And so the idea of washing away all of those gimmicks, washing away all of those different tricks and shortcuts that people want to do and just really deal with the basis of it all and clear it all up and deal with what's authentic and what's real. And that's what we're doing. Let's clear up all the foolishness. Let's clear up all of that which is not serving us in truth and present what's actually real and let's operate from that. So it's really a cleanse for your brain. It's a Yes. It's literally washing away the negativity. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. No, yeah. I love, I, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Now you, you realize that some people aren't going to get that at first, but yeah, absolutely. but, but I, I can understand, you know, just to be honest, I can actually see that it's, it, it ends up being kind of a brilliant double edged sword because the people that don't get it at first will say, Oh, you're trying to, you know, brainwash people. And you're like, no, it was, it actually is, it's positive. And, you know, and mm -hmm. you can explain exactly what you just did. Some people will be like, yes, that's great. That's what I want to do. I'm, I'm, I'm here to find a marketer is going to brainwash people to buy my brand. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, exactly. so either, either way you can, you can explain it however you want. Um, because it's, uh, the interpretation is malleable enough. So I, I, yes. I think it's brilliant. That's great. That's great. And, and that, you haven't changed and that it. Is, and I haven't, no. And and that's <laughs> and that's the purpose because it does it does draw a conversation. It draw does draw attention. And people are like, yes. And they are like, yeah, these need to happen. And others are like, wait, man, wait a minute. You're coming out like that, just straightforward, but yeah, but then when I explain it to them and they get or they read about it and they're like, Oh, okay, yes, that does make sense. I really like that. But it becomes a conversation piece. And sometimes you have to just be a little polarized and put something out there just to get the attention. And then what you do with that attention makes all the difference. Right, right. I hear you. I hear you. I love it. Um, now, in going through your website, first of all, it's a beautiful website. It's exactly what I would Thank expect you. from you. The photos are beautiful. It's written beautifully. The, the aesthetics are beautiful. All right. So I'm going to stop washing you with praise. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it coming. Keep it coming. I'll take it. <laughs> but uh, one one thing stood out to me that I was a little surprised to see. You create pitch decks for uh, people looking for investors. 
Wow, yeah, that's something that we just put up. Um, matter of fact, I think we put that up last week, and it is something that's new that we're introducing. And there's a there's a number of different services that there'll be a couple more things that's going to be added on there. And to answer your question, yes, because we're doing something right now, and this ties into Miami, and I'll explain how in just a moment. We're doing something right now that's focusing on empowering and strengthening startups. A lot of companies that are out they're out here and they're trying to get their they're trying to get funding. A lot of companies are out here already got funding. They're looking for their next round of funding. And it just so happens that Miami is like one of the top, if not the, I think it, it was the, I'm not sure if it still is, but I believe it's still maybe in that position, number one in startups in the entire country. And so there are so many startups that are here because the startup in the tech business startup culture that's happening, the city is heavily behind it, pushing it. And a lot more industry is coming here and that's been happening heavily and it's still happening as we speak that we decided that, you know what, we know what we're doing and we know what we can do. And what we want to do is empower at startups and help them to accomplish what they want to accomplish. And they need the funding to do that. So we are able to produce a piece of material that can get them the attention more than they can get the attention from the old method of doing it. So a traditional pitch deck that's provided is a document that you would end up presenting or you end up having submitting to an investor. And then the investor is like, hey, you know what? All right, let me check it out. See, this is interesting to me. And they, they go through hundreds of these. One investor can go through 100 of these in a day. And so they have somebody else screening it. A video pitch deck now offers a quick, simplistic way for a person to be able to now watch your story, who you are, how your team relates. They can see and visually see the energy that's there. They can see the connection of your brand. They can see your passion. They can't get that from a pitch deck, a traditional pitch deck. They can now see you speak. They can hear you, uh, see and hear you speak. They can see you connecting with Others, they can see the testimonials of others who've been impacted by that. They can feel now what's really happening with your company and brand and what you're offering rather than them just reading it. So a video pitch deck offers so much more impact than a traditional deck. And so this is something that we started to offer and we're working with some accelerators right now and presenting it to different um, startups. So that way these startups can gain the competitive edge and put, you know, just reach these uh, investors and really tell and share their story in a passionate way. Well, let, let me tell you, brother, as, as, a, as a corporate attorney who has and continues to represent many startups and has, you know, advised on and read, you know, countless pitch decks in my life. One thing I've never seen is a video pitch deck. So I have, I, I think that that's, that's some next level stuff and, and it, and it makes sense. I mean, as far as in, in the evolution of pitch decks, I'm glad that you were able to, you know, so succinctly uh, describe to my audience what a pitch deck is. So I didn't have to do it. And uh, you've planted this seed in my head, you know, offline, we should talk about, I'd love to see uh, an example of, of a video pitch deck just so I can uh, get my own creative wheels uh, turning. But that's fascinating. I, I, it just stood out to me based on, you know, my professional background and, and, uh, I, I just uh, thought that was, uh, yeah, it just stood out to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that I asked about that. What's next for you and brainwash media. What's in the future for you, brother? One of the things that I'm doing is really sharing the power of and the impact of social impact marketing and bringing that message out there all next year. I'm looking at really, Bring it, bring it out there in as far as the message and how marketing needs to be leveled up, challenging uh, the traditional marketing sense. And anyone who typically is in the marketing space knows that, okay, things need to change up. You need to do something different and you need to put people first. So we're going to be sharing a lot and having conversations around that a lot. So we're going to be doing more projects. We're doing this right here. A lot of what we've been doing were like, before Brainwash Media was, doing, was, was really quiet and it was behind the scenes. I didn't even want it to be put out there as much. I wanted just the projects to be put out there while we solidify a few different things within the industry, improve our methods and everything like that. 
Now we are officially putting the name out there, which we did like mid-year this year. And next year, we're going to really go full scale and push the purpose of why we're doing what we're doing, which brings it right to me personally. And, you know, a lot of people have been wondering where I've been. I've been in the trenches. It's quiet. I've been very, very quiet. If you even, even on social, you won't even really find me. I've removed everything. I've been very quiet purposefully because I've been, number one, focused working and doing what we've been doing. And number two, I'm going to come out with a message and an ongoing campaign on why I'm personally doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to push my brand back out there again, reintroduce myself and let everybody know what I'm what I'm working on right now, which is how you can empower other people to empower yourself. And there's so many different ways on how you can accomplish what you want in life simply by serving others. And it can look different ways and it can be a fun journey. And so I'm going to take people on my personal journey and share that. That's going to be uh, one of the things that happens through the projects. There's a lot of adventure around the different projects that we're doing from the working with different brands to the docu-series that we're filming, the two different docu-series that we're filming right now to a film series uh, uh, um, that we're working on, like a martial arts sci-fi fantasy thriller that we're actually working on right now. And then some. So it's going to be a heck of a journey from me personally introducing that, but then me sharing why these things are happening and how each of these projects can still be cool, interesting, fun, and empowering people and making money at the same time. Oh, well, all of that sounds exciting, uh, in particular, <laughs> the movie stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, what did you say? Sci-fi? <laughs> yeah. martial arts porn whatever you said i don't know <laughs> it sounds like a great movie <laughs> You're like i'm down <laughs> <laughs> all right so listen man do you have uh any any events or any felt anything else coming up that you want to promote while you're here with me on the mic brother we have a series of events that's going to be we have a couple of different partnerships in collaboration that we're doing we're doing something with startup prize so there's going to be a series that's going to be going out monthly uh, that's just going, this is going to kick off in December, but then it's going to really go ongoing in um, January. And that's heavily for those companies who are looking at just leveling up, those startups that's looking at leveling up. So there's going to be a lot of solutions that we offer and we present there. So we'll be doing some um, detailed explanation on marketing, branding, expanding, some uh, collaborations, and then also with the video pitch decks and some giveaways that we'll be doing and things like that. And then... There's a few other different partnerships I can't speak on right now, but they're being finalized. And then there's so many other individual events that will be kicking off between uh, top of the year in the first quarter to top of the year in spring. And so just tune in, connect with uh, Brainwash Media, and also you can look at brainwashmedia.com or you can also check out edwinmohammed.com and you can follow the journey and you'll be able to see the social channel to connect with. Okay, sounds great, great, great. And so, uh, last question, man. How can they find you on social media? Tell people how they can reach you. I mean, every everything you create is visually beautiful, but it's also meaningful, and it's it's so well put together. Where can they find you? Give it, give us all the handles. Yes, you know what? As as of right now, as mentioned earlier, I'm pretty quiet on social. I can be found a little bit more easily and I'll be rolling things out a little bit more first on LinkedIn and then Instagram and some of the other channels shortly afterwards. So the easiest way to find and follow that journey is to go to edwinmohammed.com and then you'll be able to um, you'll be able to find more uh, connecting with me in those social that social journey. Because uh, you'll find me, for example, you can find me on Instagram at Edwin the Stylistocrat. However, it's very quiet on there, pers purposely. And so I, I suggest everyone to look and go to, we're going to be relaunching by next week. We'll have a whole, the whole site up on edwinmohammed.com, the revised version of that. And then you can also go to Brainwash Media. This is going to be a lot of information around that. All right. Sounds great. Well, listen, uh, we're going to include uh, all those links in the show notes so people can find you. And man, I, I'm, uh, I've always found you extremely impressive. And uh, after this, I've learned so much I did not know about you and 
your journey and uh, where you're at now and, and the future. And so I'm hoping we can catch up, you know, in person, you know, whether it's lunch, mm-hmm. drink, what I don't even know if you drink, I don't know, whatever. But it, it, well, uh, I don't, know, but yeah, we can still get a mocktail. You can get something, yeah, I buy myself a mocktail and go from there. The, re- the reason I just said that, I was <laughs> thinking back, I just like did like, like a play like a replay in my head i don't think i've ever seen you inebriated i know you've seen me <laughs> but, 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 but i'm a i'm a, I'm a happy mm. drunk ain't i <laughs> <laughs> indeed indeed exactly um but uh yeah man let's let's definitely talk offline and i really appreciate the time uh it's been great and i'm looking forward to uh reconnecting you know god brought us brought us here brother I, I'm, I'm loving indeed. it indeed yes you know and i appreciate you having me i appreciate being on and having this conversation and um again man thank you all right no problem i appreciate you man well as you guys can see i have a very uh long-standing and warm relationship with my friend edwin and you know he brought i think a unique perspective that I don't think we've dealt with specifically in any of our prior episodes, uh, which is the marriage of profits and purpose. And, you know, when people say profits, uh, sometimes it has a negative connotation. I don't, I don't think profits are negative at all, as long as it's, it, it comes from a good place and it goes to a good place, right? But when you marry it with purpose, uh, the, the intertwining of those two things is what makes business have an, uh, an effect on the world, an effect on communities that has a lasting positive impact. And so the way that he's taken his marketing um, strategy to the next level, as he calls it, by marrying profits with purpose and empowerment of people worthy causes, et cetera, I think is something that all business owners should try to think about. Is there a way to set yourself apart from your potential competitors by actually doing good in the world in congruence with your values and the values of your potential clients and customers, right? Particularly if brainwash media, you know, or others like them, but I don't, Let's not let's not talk about others other than brainwash media, right? But it seems like brainwash media has found clever ways to make doing good in the world actually not cost a company money, but also to improve their profits, right? You know, because putting a certain message out there, as we discussed, can actually draw customers to you. It can cause them to not want to deal with your competitors, or it can cause them to stay with you out of loyalty. And I, I just, I just uh, found getting, you know, doing a deeper dive into that specific strategy to be very interesting and very worthwhile. And as I said in the interview, it's a win, win, win. Okay. Make all the money you want. This is America. Be as profitable as you want. Okay. Just be ethical. And if you can do some good at the same time, great. I just don't see any downside to that. And that's the one lesson that really stood out to me that was distinct from other interviews we've we've had so far. So let that marinate. Let that marinate, business owners. And also remember, yet again, we have another example of someone who is an entrepreneur that takes what he loves, his passions. He wants to, you know, do good for the world, help the youth, but he's also a fashion connoisseur, a marketing connoisseur, a branding connoisseur, and how to combine those two causes. You take your passions, you figure out how to make a living from it. And then if you have multiple passions, rather than having being separate, if you can combine them in a way that makes sense for you and makes sense for the client in a creative way or think outside the box, then do it, go for it. And this is a perfect example of him doing that. And that's my fresh take. So thanks again for listening in to the Fresh Mix podcast. Can't wait for you to listen in to the next episode, which I guarantee will be very, very, hmm, revealing. (laughs) Take care, guys.
For details and show notes about today's show, go to freshmixpodcast.com. The Florida Podcast Network has a closed Facebook group exclusively for super fans of their shows. Just search for FPN Insiders on Facebook to leave us comments, get early scoops, contests, and other special treats. Or you can just complain about how... Uh, now, this is a new one. This is this recently happened. We just had Daylight Savings Time. And it's my opinion that Daylight Savings Time is much worse in Florida because we're so used to having so much beautiful weather and sunshine. And then that one day it all switches and it gets dark at 530 and it's just depressing. I don't know about you. I like sunlight. That's why I live here. So uh, when are they going to pass that bill in Congress to uh, make Daylight Savings Time permanent or get rid of it altogether? Whichever way makes it sunny longer, (laughs) whatever way that is. I'm a lawyer. I should know better. (laughs) Anyway, be sure to visit all the great shows at floridapodcastnetwork.com. Keep catching Who's Fresh in the Florida Mix with Florida's Fresh Mix Podcast.